Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and this over here, where I've just sailed from, is Canada, and this piece of ocean over here that I'm sailing into is America. If you don't believe me, here is my Google Maps showing it happen live. And so, as far as a map is concerned, I am now officially in the United States of America. America's laws apply. This is uh, US territory officially. But when you think about the reality, am I really in America? I didn't go for an immigration checkpoint. If I swam to the US, that would still be considered legal because I'm not really in their territory. And so, is this triangle really? a part of the United States, I would wager no. But obviously this stretch of the Canada-US border is not the only place in the world that says it belongs to one country, but in reality is much more used and in effect belongs to that country. In fact, there are several more and wow, is this a whole video about those? Yes, it is. And so obviously we have to mention the biggest example that is the reason this isn't always so frivolous because Ukraine looks like this on a map. And in fact, if you look at the Ukrainian shirts, uh, you'll see they have a map of Ukraine on there, except this map somehow causes outrage in Russia. And why is that? and that is because the fact that even though the world says that this is Ukraine, Ukraine agrees, yeah, this part of Ukraine is Ukraine, uh, the situation on the ground, and has been for eight years now, is that this is a part of, uh, it was a, a, an independent thing for a few days, but it's been part of Russia ever since. There are Russian military bases here that have been there since, honestly, Ukraine's independence, but also the rest of the island has a part of Russia, with Russia, everything else, etc, etc, etc. The world can say it's Ukraine all they like, but is it really? And this is one of those examples where I used to think, like, yeah, at some point we have to admit, as much as it sucks, as much as we don't want to, that this is a thing. However, uh, given the situation that it led to, you can see why countries are very reluctant to give any, even an inch on their territory, because once you confirm that, yeah, we're just going to redraw borders based on what's uh, the reality, you're kind of effectively telling other countries you're going to give away bits of your country. Just like, take, for example, the United Arab Emirates and Oman. Are you familiar with these countries? If not, oh man, let me tell you about what's going on here. Um, so yeah, this is a really interesting part of the world because uh, obviously this was all part of one big uh, empire. Do you know who, which country was ruling that empire that covered a quarter of the world? I'm, I'm not familiar with it. Let me know if you know in the comments. Uh, it, it was from somewhere in Europe, right? Anyway, so uh, basically when they divided that place up, an interesting little border quirk is this thing right here. This is the UAE, which is made up of its own, whole own ton of emirates, by the way. And then inside one of those emirates, you'll notice that there is a bit of Oman. Uh, you might think like, wait, no, that's not Oman, right? There's no way that is. But if you zoom in close, you can see that, yep, on this side, it is distinctly Oman. So this is Sharjah over here. This is Oman over here, um, the Musad the Musandam governorate, and then this right here, Nadwa, is the UAE and again, except the only way to access this part of the UAE is to go through Oman. And in fact, the only way to get to most of, uh, you know, to, from this part of Oman to the rest is to drive through the UAE. In fact, I looked into this because I was curious about the situation on the ground. I was like, really? How does a whole town in Oman operate without going through that stuff? It happens that the UAE and uh, Oman have pretty friendly relations on it, and in reality, it basically functions as if it's part of um, you know, the UAE, with the exception being that, again, you don't need any, uh, there's no passport checks, there's no anything like that, there's, the only real thing is that, oh, I guess if you're going to be driving through, make sure you have the right insurance for driving in Oman, technically. You are crossing a border as far as an insurance claim is concerned, but as far as the people who live here, they're very fortunate in that, yeah, they actually, uh, <laughs> also, wow, this is actually actually Oman Police Station. Uh, they're very fortunate in that they effectively just live in a weird region that is controlled by a slightly different people, uh, but there aren't many uh, stresses to the day-to-day -day lives, which is really cool in my opinion. The fact that this whole little area, which is, by the way, a weird place that I really want to visit now, which has a forest, by the way. What's, what's the deal with that? Um, this, this whole area um, is a part of another country, just chilling right uh, there, not that far from the rest of the UAE. Also, I'm, I'm trying to click away the map, but it's not liking it. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, also you can see that to get from Madha to the rest of uh, Oman, it's not even, like, that horrifically far, right? It's like, well, you just drive for an hour, and then you do the real border checkpoint. Even though you were in Oman, and you're going to Oman, you go for the UAE, but only in this particular point. It's strange stuff, but, you know, welcome to the world of weird borders. If you want to know about the even weirder situation, though, I mean, actually, if you talk about Western Sahara, this is another one where Google Maps is like, ah, oh, I refuse to even get myself involved with what's happening there. Western Sahara is not a country, and I'm not trying to take a side on this stance here. I'm not trying to say, oh yeah, there is no nation of Western Sahara. I'm trying to say no one thinks there is a Western Sahara nation. Either there is an extension of Morocco, which heads all the way down here, 
or there is a separate country called the, uh, you know, uh, it's the SADC. You don't need to, you don't need to know more than that. But this country uh, looks like this on, in reality right now. Uh, this is what the division is looking like. However, Morocco is meant to hold a independence referendum on what's happening here. And they just... They just kind of haven't, if I, <laughs> is my best understanding of the situation. Um, if you if you read into the the series of events in uh, in in 1991, they they had a very long oh sorry at the end of 1991 big big long guerrilla war uh, and then they had a ceasefire under the condition of uh, a referendum on independence, but they just kind of didn't. And so here we are in the 2000s where there's a uh, Saharan People's Liberation Army which are really trying to get their country off the ground. Because again, it's not even a very big country, but it's their land. They want to have a country there. Morocco says, we love these natural resources. And who who's saying no to doubling their country's size? And, uh, you know, effectively importance and everything else. And so the stalemate kind of sits like that. It is a very, very hard thing, even if you're Moroccan, to kind of cross over here. But especially if you're a foreigner, crossing over into this place is a big kind of no-no zone. So in reality, calling it the Western Saharan Territory is the easiest way to avoid questions. But this isn't Western Sahara. It is either Morocco Part 2, uh, you know, Electric Boogaloo, Boogaloo, or it is where freedom fighters and slash or independence, you know, terrorists or whatever you, whatever you want to say, uh, and people who are fighting for their nation's very existence, uh, they, they are existing over here, doing their own thing. It's not a part of Western Sahara. Google Maps is just kind of wrong about this because you have to be diplomatic in this sort of situation. And uh, an example of this that isn't just Google Maps though, because obviously with Crimea, of course, it's it's a Google Maps thing, right? And with, with uh, you know, what's happening here, well, Google Maps is reflecting the reality on the ground quite well, and uh, it's picking pretty decent sides here. And like, of course, Google Maps is going to show the US-Canada border correctly. However, a situation that is very, very interesting, that kind of uh, doesn't work with the rest of the world's concept of national borders, is Northern Ireland. So, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, as it says in my passport, is the nation at which I am from. It is made up of three nations slash four nations. It's either four or three nations in a province, depending on who you ask. Um, but there is a part of the UK called Northern Ireland. Six of the 32 counties which make up the island of Ireland are inside of a country called Northern Ireland, which is significantly more loyal to the rest of the UK. Um, some part of that is because Scotland sent a whole ton of people there. That's why Northern Ireland has a weird kind of Scottish sounding accent, fun fact. But the, the history as to why it doesn't need to matter to the fact that Northern Ireland is effectively its own country that gets to chill with the UK. It's, it's like an adopted kid that gets to spend some of its time with the UK and some of its time with Ireland. And to explain that, allow me to go through this fun page. This is foreign travel advice for Ireland from the UK, by the way, keep that in mind. But if you look, if you're reading through this list, you'll see that it's like, well, yeah, if you if you if you, you don't need to have a passport to visit, blah blah blah. But if you're going by the, okay, let's let's see what it is. Oh yeah, so British and Irish citizens do not require travel documents when crossing the land border. Not, oh yeah, ID is advised or like you don't need to have any valid ID. It's just like, yeah, if you would like to cross from Northern Ireland to Ireland, you know, from one sovereign state to another, yeah, you don't have to worry about it. However, if you're crossing from the UK to Ireland, since sometime in the 90s, I'm not actually sure entirely why, um, you do need to bring a full, full ID. And if you're traveling by air, you need a passport. Um, so yeah, British nationals traveling to the UK don't need a passport to visit Ireland. However, Irish immigration officers will check the idea of all passengers arriving by air from the UK and may ask for proof of nationality, which is effectively saying, Bring a passport, probably for the best if you do that. If you're going by plane, weirdly enough, this is this is the strangest situation. Travel inside this area, you know, it's it's even weirder when you think of the Isle of Man, which is like also part of the UK, but sort of not. And the the other Channel Islands, there's a lot of places that are in this like travel bubble of bring ID, maybe a passport, but you don't need to. But maybe it's better if you do sort of area. Hmm. But Northern Ireland is the weirdest example because, yeah, like I said, even though the rest of the UK bring an ID, preferably a passport, from Northern Ireland to Ireland, do whatever you want, man. As long as you're not crossing over from across the, you know, the, across the strait, you're you're all good here. Is this the Irish Sea? It's the Irish Sea. If you're not crossing the Irish Sea, you're all good here. And so Northern Ireland is effectively a part of Ireland as far as that stuff goes, because obviously they don't, they don't want to separate communities of Irish people from each other. However, as far as, like, government goes, 
Um, it depend. It, it's it's got this weird power sharing arrangement which matches almost nothing else in the world. Um, but it is a part of the UK. It has the NHS, which is uh, at least as far as a lot of people are concerned, a a good healthcare service that is. Uh, you know, like at the very least, it is better than the Irish system of uh, healthcare service. So they've got the NHS going for them, but they, they're not plugged into the UK train system. I mean, I think that's obvious looking at the geography, but there's a lot of weird agencies that don't fully apply there. And then, like I said, they have their own devolved government. And so there are all sorts of weird things like, I don't know, abortion is banned uh, only in this part of the UK, um, or to, to give many other weird examples. Uh, and so Northern Ireland is this weird territory that is like its own country, but it doesn't want to be its own country. And it's like it's an island. I mean, it's quite physically connected, but it doesn't want to be Ireland because it values its part in the United Kingdom from where you have to get ID checked if you want to go between. Uh, because I, I don't know, man, try, try not to think about this one too much. Also, during COVID, here's a fun little, you know, COVID and borders really started to like drum in where borders really lied because you know that the, the, you know the EU has a shared set of border competencies but during emergencies they can make their own stuff so you realize that every EU country has its own border agency then and one of the weird examples of this is that during uh, that one of the times where they could have locked down a border they still didn't decide to if you wanted to go from the UK to Ireland you needed a COVID test, I want to say. Um, maybe just vaccination. It, you need one of those two things. I'm pretty sure it was a COVID test for a long time. Um, and maybe to isolate. If you go to Ireland via, uh, you go to from the UK to Belfast, internal flight, no issue. And then if you want to go to Belfast to Dublin, ah, internal uh, issue, no COVID test at any point during the route. You could argue this proves the silliness of COVID rules. And wow, maybe that would be an interesting point to, to have now that it's been two years of uh, silly things that are coming to an end, but we still won't do that today and instead we'll say wow the Northern Northern Ireland It's like its own country, but it's also like it's a part of the UK But it's also like it's a part of Ireland and also it's none of those things and all of those things at the same time Isn't that nuts? Isn't it? You know, uh, I, I I have to point this out I am at like uh because I'm, I'm still in the process of this. It's it's really it's really frustrating, but um <laughs> Because <laughs> it's it's now going to take two years, but um, just because I have a grandparent who was ostensibly born in the same country as me, Northern Ireland, a part of the United Kingdom of Great Britain, Northern Ireland, I am entitled to citizenship of this country right here, um, which therefore means I'm entitled to EU citizenship. What does that even mean? How does that make any sense? And if you think about it too long, it kind of doesn't. I think Greenland's another great example of the, like maybe the reverse, you could say, because Greenland is a part of Denmark. Here's a map of Denmark, but like fully Denmark and. And, uh, you know, it might look like this, but it's actually all the way over here. But Greenland is that weird case of it's in Denmark fully. You're, you're Danish and the currency... Actually... Is there a Greenlandic krona? I'm pretty sure it's the Danish krona. But they're they're in Denmark and the da Danish military looks after them and all that stuff. And uh, they want to be independent, but also they can't talk about it too much um, for weird reasons. Stra strange place, right? Anyway, so Greenland, you are Danish if you live here. That is your country. That is your place that is issuing your passports. However, you're not an EU citizen if you live here. You are... Uh, living outside of the EU despite living in an EU country. I'd say the other weird examples of that are in the Caribbean. Basically, the world is filled with weird islands and weird places that, like, are fully inside of a country, but also really sort of aren't. I mean, like, for instance, even, like, Guam, right? Like, it's this is a part of the United States of America. I mean, like, is it a part of the United States of America? Like, it is. There's, it's, there's no checks between here and the the rest of the situation, but there is a unique visa policy. You can visit Guam without, uh, with slightly easier restrictions than visiting the rest of the US. In some cases, uh, asterisk, asterisk, who knows? Um, and uh, so as a result of that, and a lot of people who want to have their children on US soil, uh, but they live in Asia, might fly here, have a baby, you know, something like that. Now he's guaranteed American citizenship. They had to change laws for that. So like, it's not really a part. Honestly, the concept of islands breaks the concept of nation states. We made we made nation states because like, yep, I'm in Germany right now. I'm, I'm in Sin. I'm in Heiger. I'm still in Germany. I'm in Drotshagen. I'm still in Germany. I'm in uh, Wuppertal, still in Germany. Duisburg, still Germany. Gok, still Germany. And as I go past the highway motel and restaurant, I'm in the Netherlands, uh, and it's going to be the Netherlands from here on out, right? Now a whole brand, like at that, that hard set point where one country fades to another. And uh, yeah, islands kind of break this rule in a weird way. However, you know what? Here's something fun. 
that I, I, because, you know, this video is fun by itself, don't get me wrong, uh, but I want to take a little detour, if you don't mind, because here's something that I've come up with recently, right? Because I, I learned to drive recently, and so I've been putting together silly trips I can do across Europe now that it's open, now they've gone back to being one solid union in terms of entering and exiting. I mean, that's not actually fully true, there's a lot of different, and whatever, you know, as long as you're vaccinated or, or something like that, you can enter the EU freely, it's really great. And so, here's an interesting thing, uh, McDonald's is slightly different depending on every EU country you go to. Obviously, if you've seen my McDonald's review series, you'll know this, but there's quite a few try points in Europe. Take this one, for instance, um, where, in fact, this is even more interesting because you can drive through, I think this is Maastricht, right? Yeah, you can drive, um, let's say, th this is a McDonald's in Belgium, I'm pretty sure it's Belgium. This is a McDonald's in Belgium. So it's got the McDonald's.be menu, the fabulous Fabio, which is a bit of a lame name for a burger. Um, and so this is a McDonald's, as you can see, it's got dine-in, it's clearly got a drive-thru up there. Um, this is a McDonald's in the Netherlands, uh, and if you look at their menu, uh, you can see that it's slightly different, different website at the very least, on the Classiques. Um, and then if we go over here, this is a uh, McDonald's in Germany, with a drive through as you can see, McDonald's Germany, whole different thing going on over here. Their menu's much less exciting. There we go, the McDonald's Supreme and the next level Puncti Semelin. And so there's three different McDonald's menus within a short radius of each other. This is truly to me what defines a country, right? This is hot, hot controversial take, okay, so we can get, we can get between the free McDonald's, oh God, what happened there? We can get between the free McDonald's in just an hour and 20 minutes, as long as we verify COVID-19 border restrictions. I bet you could do it in less if you just find a more convenient McDonald's. My point being, is uh, is that a fun idea to prove that national borders are like hard in places where it doesn't make sense them to be hard, and they're soft in places where you'd expect them to really be, you know, the, the, the Northern Irish Ireland border is something that really, you know, like this is an EU external border where we're just like, mm. <laughs> you know, is that crazy? Let, let me know what you think. Is that a good idea? I think it's a good idea. I'm probably gonna do it regardless of what you say. But my point here is just to say, the world is a wacky place, filled with wacky places. And uh, you know what isn't wacky? The end of this video, you're here, it's over. Um, I uh, I may, I got it, do you like my, do you like my hoodie? It's uh, I, I, I might have, might have done something a bit wrong with the printing on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, it's, it's been nice and pleasant and warm. If you like one and want film for yourself, you know what you can do? You can't buy one, they're not available yet. But what you can do is you can give me money and get nothing in return by just going to patreon.com slash I always go to the wrong page, right? Uh, do you wanna see how much I'm at? 172 a month. Do you want that to be 177 a month? I bet you do. Give me some money and I'll use it to to fund McDonald's. I'm just kidding, I won't use it to buy anything of value. I'm just gonna put it in a in a big vault somewhere and then I'll have more money stashed away. And then I'll use that money to buy things you disagree with. It'll be great, give me money. Thank you for watching, hope you all enjoyed. Uh, this was a bad uh, video, all inspired by my uh, little trip. Second channel, don't care, bye.